Welcome back to another episode of Destination Safari, a show that showcases luxury lodges, their conservation efforts, the wildlife experiences, the accommodation, and much more. Welcome back to another Destination Safari episode where we will be covering a lodge tucked away in a little valley surrounded by indigenous thicket that is Bukela Lodge. I'm joined by Kevin Bailey who will be explaining some stories, the history and a brief overview of Bukela Lodge. It is a privilege to be sitting here with Kevin Bailey, who's going to tell us the story and the history of this beautiful African magical place. All right, so Kevin, thank you for joining us again and welcome. It is lovely to be sitting here again and have a nice chat with you. Thanks, Eric. Great to be sitting here with you. Welcome back to Bukela. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lovely to have this opportunity to chat to you and great to have this opportunity to chat to all of the Wild Earth followers. Indeed, indeed it is. And um, yeah, we're going to cover basically the history, the, the, the makings of the lodge, as well as what goes into an everyday activity here at Bukela. Looking forward to it. It's been a great journey getting to this and uh, really nice to have the opportunity to share the journey with everyone. Kevin, being someone who has such a strong passion in conservation, what were the, the difficulties or challenges in choosing such a, a unique spot that is Bukela? Tell us something about that. Yeah, so we have a sister lodge, as we know, Schlossi down, down the road. Yes. Uh, the real attraction of Bukela was one, the real promise of the Amakala Game Reserve. Okay. Um, we fell in love with the concept that had started here. Uh, as you know, the reserve started in 1999. Uh, we started looking at Bukele in 2006, oh, right. uh, and it was a little lodge, just four rooms. Only uh, four. Only four rooms. So, uh, so what we really saw was the potential in oh, it. Right. Uh, it's tucked away in a southwest corner of the reserve. It's about as far to this side of the fence that you can get in the reserve. Um, so it's a very quiet little corner. Uh, and the, the literal translation of Bukele is place of tranquility. And uh, I think you'll agree sitting here. Absolutely. It Absolutely. fulfills its brief of place of tranquility. So the site really sold itself to us is we felt, yeah, there is real potential to do something here uh, and build on what was a really good start and a great location. Well, I mean, absolutely. A place of tranquility, as soon as you walk in here, you feel almost that you can kick your shoes off, you can relax. It's, there's nothing more to worry about. This is a sort of a stress-free stress environment as you are. Absolutely. So, you know, our view of a game lodge and to really make a game lodge work is uh, you must feel like you're at home. Indeed. Uh, it must be an aspirational home, like the sort of home you maybe see in magazines. Yes, yes. But at the same time, you must feel really comfortable and so, you know, even where we're sitting, it feels like a lounge where you could just as easily read a book or uh, take a drink. So making people feel comfortable in the game lodge is really paramount. Absolutely, absolutely.
Bukela has turned into an absolutely amazing African destination. Tell us more about the architectural design and how you and your wife designed such a beautiful place. Mm, thanks, Eric. It, it's been a real fun journey building this, and it's sort of evolved as we've got a little bit better as a business. As I mentioned, it started with just four rooms, yes. the, the, the built units, the bungalows that we call them. Uh, they give a sort of sense of security in that they've got brick walls and thatched roofs. Uh, so a nice way to fight the elements in Africa mm -hmm. with a nice thatch roof. Thatch is an incredibly useful uh, tool in Africa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, but then when we started to, to, to build a bigger lodge, we really wanted to be as in touch with nature as we possibly could be. So the other units are based on a tented structure. All right. uh, we refer to them as tents, but they really are kind of hotel rooms with a canvas uh, wall. Uh, why we so the, 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 the design idea behind those was uh, Bukela being an unfenced camp yes. is let's get as close to nature and give our visitors a really uh, up close and personal experience mm -hmm. of being in Bukela. So the, the, the design element behind the tents really took care of itself of, it's trying to take all of the elements of a luxury hotel room that you'd find in a city yes. and put it right in the middle of the bush, but involve you and immerse you in the experience Indeed. while doing it. So you've got the best of both worlds here. You've got a nice, comfortable place where you won't be able to really hear much of what's going on outside, but then you've also got another bit of accommodation where for those who prefer to rough it out a little bit here, the outside noises here, the everyday life that is outside, they have that to choose. Absolutely. Quite so, nice. you know, I think uh, the, the, the noise of the game reserve, really sort of iconic sounds like the sounds of the jackals yes. when you first hear them uh, are, are really part of the experience. Uh, the night birds that come out, uh, that transition that happens uh, in a game reserve as the sun sets yes. of, uh, you know, a little, a, a sort of increase in activity as it cools down. Mm -hmm. That's really great to be uh, right there. Yeah. The other thing really is the site is tucked quite elevated in the reserve because we're quite high up here, but we're also slightly down the hills all around us mm -hmm. so that we get a bit of protection from the elements. Yes. And, and we sort of view it of, if you were pioneering a village, this would maybe be the site you would choose. Absolutely, of, yeah. uh, it, it's almost like a fortress in that you can see everything coming at you, mm -hmm. but then tucked away a little bit to be, give you a bit of protection from the wind. And then in terms of how the units are laid out, uh, obviously water is very scarce generally in the Eastern Cape yes. and an, an important feature of any game reserve. No so the waterhole is really the center, the heart of the lodge. And so what we tried to do is arrange the village around the waterhole so that almost all the units either get a direct view of the waterhole or they get the sort of picture window that you and I are looking out here across the rest of the reserve. Amazing. So, Kevin, we know that one of the main attractions for safari destinations is what we can do outside. So, tell us more about what activities Bukela has to offer and what 
guests can expect to see on Amakala in terms of birds, mammals, and flora, etc. Would love to, Eric. So yes, absolutely, you're a hundred percent on. As the, the, the whole idea of a game reserve experience is to be outdoors as much as possible and in nature. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll sort of talk you through a typical day on uh, on safari. So the day, as in because you've got to make the most of it, starts early, um, a little later in, in winter mm -hmm. because uh, the sun comes up a little later, but at an early start and uh, a snack breakfast, get yourself a cup of coffee. If you're like me, the world doesn't start until Not the first cup of coffee. So a cup of coffee and a snack, some cereal, uh, some pastries and so on, kind of kicks off the day. And then the main, the first event is the morning game drive. Of course. So we try to keep game drives to two and a half, three hours. Um, it's manageable in terms of uh, being out there for a, a good time to take in as much as you possibly can, but not pushing it too long. Absolutely. So morning game drives are, are pretty special in themselves of you're kind of waking up with the reserve. Uh, and you know, you've yeah. done them many times. Indeed, indeed. So uh, in terms of the game drives, um, the beautiful thing about the Amakala being large enough to have a big carrying capacity, but by the same time being small enough and a private game reserve is in a few days, you can get to most parts of the reserve, uh, which leads to an exceptional game viewing experience, is if you have uh, three days with us, you're almost guaranteed to see incredible range of wildlife. Oh, yes. uh, obviously, in terms of it's a well-known marketing slogan, the big five, mm -hmm. is there's always a really good chance that you will see uh, immediately at least big four of the big five. Mm -hmm. uh, the elusive leopard, uh, you know, some people get lucky, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you will see certainly four of the big five in, in a game reserve. Um, that's special in itself. To me, what's even more special though is all of the rest of the game reserve, in, including the, the flora and fauna, mm. um, you know, just really immersing yourself in all the sounds and sights and smells Absolutely. of nature. So usually on the morning game drive, uh, as you know, the animals dictate where you go. Indeed, yes, they do. So uh, that dictates the timing, but there's usually time for a, a, a coffee stop, uh, which is also a nice moment, again, sort of greeting the day with a coffee stop, finding a good spot on the game reserve, finding somewhere to, to get a little bit of a, a, a standstill in view. Mm -hmm, um, and then, uh, depending on the sightings, uh, back to the lodge for a real... Uh, feast of breakfast, so almost a brunch, mm -hmm. uh, based on a South African version of an English breakfast, I guess is the best way to put it, yes. but a, a, a buffet style continental breakfast available, and then a nice hearty cooked breakfast to really get you going. Uh, so then that, that takes you through, you then have a, a couple of hours to really just enjoy the lodge, depending on the weather, perhaps it's a dip in the pool. Mm -hmm. So we've got two pools at Bukela, uh, one up here just next to us, one right overlooking the, the waterhole, uh, and maybe the dip will lead to even more game viewing, and maybe the animals will come visit you in the pool.
Kevin, in our previous sit down, you spoke about the three C's. Do you maybe want to tell us a little bit how that links Bukela together? I would love to, yeah. The three C's are really important, Eric, because they kind of make the whole game reserve operation work as a whole. All right. So the, the, the three C's are the whole reserve is based on conservation. And without the conservation aspect, we obviously wouldn't have a lodge, we wouldn't have everybody here. So yes. what's particularly special about the conservation aspect is we view it as a way of repairing a bit of damage that man's heavy hand has had on this area mm. and on the planet. Yes. And look, it's, it's modest, but it's part of a broader effort. And what's particularly great for me is the feeling that as you walk onto the Amakala Game Reserve, as it is now, we've almost turned the clock back 150 years. Yeah. Uh, back to how it would have been, uh, you know, when our ancestors were walking around and man hadn't become quite as uh, in their way yes. as, the, as he is now. Yes, yes. So that's, that's wonderful and it, it's a way to keep, uh, make sure that uh, we keep these pockets of beauty and nature. So conservation is very important. Uh, but conservation can't exist in a vacuum. No, absolutely uh, not. In terms of conservation is we've got to have community involvement and it's got to make sense to the community because if we're saying we're kind of undoing man's work is we've got to make sure that community is involved and that they see the benefits of it. Yes, yes. So conservation and community go hand in hand very much. And then the third C that I referred to last time is the commercial aspect of it, is you need the, the whole operation to be commercial so that it is self-funding. Um, you know, and that's the beauty of the reserve is every single guest to the Amakala is making a direct contribution to the conservation play. The better the conservation play gets, the more the community are involved, the more jobs that are created, and the more people are able to be touched by this great project. Amazing. So that's really symbiotic. Uh, the, the fourth C I would sort of add on that is one of the real humbling and uh, why it's been such a privilege to be a part of this is the collaboration. Yes. Um, we are one reserve, one game reserve, with multiple owners. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of the, the landowners own some of the farms, but we operate as one. What makes Amakala, Bukela and Flossi unique? Yeah, that, that's a great story. So for us personally, what makes Bukela really special is that it's designed on a place that we love to be. So yeah. uh, it's, it's many years of evolving, of growing this little African village of ours yeah. and, and kind of looking for the comforts that we would love to have on a safari. Uh, it's wonderful every time I walk in here and I see my wife's design influences. She was also the project manager in building it. Uh, there's some great stories there of uh, we, we only had two months to do the main uh, extensions to the reserve. So uh, it was literally a case of workmen out the back door and guests in the front door. Yeah. 
that, that, that was amazing. And then every time I step in is seeing all of the touches mm. uh, that uh, are very much our signature touch. Absolutely. Uh, I think in terms of Bukela, it, we've touched on it, is it really is the place of tranquility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tucked away in a far corner of the reserve. So that feeling of peace really pervades. Yeah. Uh, Schlozi is more on the plains, so the game tends to wander around all day around Schlozi. And of course, at Schlozi as well, we've got the resident hippo. Yes. So there's always something going. Uh, whereas this is really, uh, I think it's, it, it really sets your rhythm to a much calmer South African mm, beat. Definitely, definitely. And then I think what makes a Makala and uh, the Eastern Cape in general, such a great safari destination is one, malaria free. Mm -hmm. That's always important. That's a big one. But that it forms such a coherent and uh, easy route, a well-established route, which is uh, a, a route I really love. So our, our gateway is Cape Town yes. and uh, Lion Roars has offerings in Cape Town. We, we view that as sort of the mother city. Yes. Uh, and it really is a fantastic city. Indeed. I mean, uh, I see it often ranked in one of the top cities in the world, and I think that's well-deserved. Yeah, absolutely. So you can do a holiday, see one of the great cities of the world, uh, uh, right outside Cape Town's doors, the Winelands. Again, you know, long-established industry mm -hmm. in South Africa, great rich history. Oh, yes. uh, my view is we make really good wine in this country. Oh, yes. So that's one of our favorite things to do is uh, try out the various wines. And that's also an offering on the route and an offering under a Lion Roar's banner. Of course. Uh, the garden route is very close to my heart. I've, I've lived in various parts of the garden route for many years. Uh, and to me, the, the real sort of heart of the garden route is Plettenberg Bay. Absolutely. So, on top of a great city and wine, you get beaches and uh, the absolutely remarkable Roburg Peninsula, which is a really great little nature reserve in itself. Uh, beaches, whales, dolphins, all of that experience. And then, so you can put all of that together on a holiday and then without any big uh, flights or long travel or hassles, an Eastern Cape Safari, the Amakala Game Reserve. So, you know, it, it, it's a really sensible and uh, comfortable itinerary packed with amazingly different experiences. Yes, yes. Once again, Kevin, thank you so much for having a chat with us. It's been lovely to find out your background on this beautiful lodge and uh, how it's come along. What a pleasure, uh, Eric. It's really been fun chatting to you and catching up with you. Absolutely. You are so much a product of this game reserve, being a local, having uh, been uh, brought up in a city near here, having been educated in a town near here. Uh, and it's been great catching up with how you've done. Uh, we are really appreciative of Wild Earth's coverage of bringing the Amakala into everybody's living rooms. It's so important that we get as many people involved in this conservation effort as we can. Mm -hmm. So we love having it and it's been really fun to have a chat. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have any more questions, uh, please head over to the website. You can find all the information there and yeah, Thank you very much, and I think that'll be it until next time on Destination Safari.